What's going on guys? We got another video with our three special guests here. We got Kareem, Sam, and Dennis. What about having the clinical experience in our field? Like how do you feel about individuals in the informatics profession? Should you go for like credentialing like BCPS? Is it needed? What what what, is, what do people care? Is it is it important? And is it important for us to stay on top of guidelines? Like what do you think about that? Well, as the only non-BCPS <laughs> didn't mean to push it. I'm, I'm gonna say BCPS is not important. Um, no, but I think it depends. If you're on oncology, I, I think they would want to see you know for you to have that respect amongst your peer group, the people who you are trying to convince or convey a certain idea. It's important to have that BCOP and BCPS to say that you could speak in those terms. If you're an ID, you need to, I think, have that BCPS, maybe that AQID that's coming mm -hmm. from Mr. Brian here. Um, They're retiring that. They to, have ID coming out. Oh, yeah. It's pretty cool. To, to, to have that respect amongst your group. And, you know, but for me, there's not an automation specific. Um, mm. and, and honestly, most of my day isn't, isn't the clinical aspects of drugs. It's how to distribute drugs. So my peer group and, and, and my end users are not necessarily the ones that I need to convey clinical experience. Not to say that I don't have any, but I've lost, <laughs> yeah. lost almost all of it, so it's probably a good thing. Wait, 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 let me ask you a question. If you were to have board certification in automation, would it be like BCADC? <laughs> what would it be? BCAT? Automation Technology? <laughs> Dennis, if you could name your certification, what would you call it? Oh man, that's so On the spot. Let's go. On the spot. B, board Certification in Pharmacy Operations. Boom. BCPL. I love it. Okay. It encompasses everything. Okay. Because it isn't just automation. Yep, automation yep, yep. is... All is, you know, it's what we do as pharmacists. Exactly. Primarily, it's distributing meds. Okay. Pharmacy in the back end, which is warehousing, it's just giant Amazon warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> Amazon pharmacy. <laughs> Board certification, Amazon services for pharmacies. So, the, the thing that Dennis pointed out is mainly respect. That seems like the hallmark or the, the foundation of what you're arguing for. Like, you guys feel the same way? Is it respect or do you feel otherwise? I think, I, I think it's definitely respect. Um, I think a lot of people, even pharmacists, are like, oh, well, that's just diet case pharmacist. And so when they see that, oh, he has some commas after your name, it's like, oh, he's or she is just as clinical as me. And, and it's sad that we've gotten to that point that, you know, credentialing makes people feel a certain way, but that's where we are today. And so sometimes it makes a, a conversation go a little bit smoother knowing that um, everyone is on the same level and everybody has the same expectations, even though it really should be like that without all of that. Um, I think um, to your first question, it is important that pharmacists, um, all pharmacists, informaticists included, continue to keep your clinical skills. You know, I need to remember 10 years that was in April with a uh, ACE member. You know, I, 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 need, I need to remember that, you know, and so that, because we're the ones that configure medications. And so if we don't stay up to date, if we don't know that the, the newest guideline has changed and a certain record or uh, medication is no longer randomly adjusted or something like that, we need to make sure that we are proactive in those changes so that we can make sure that the front line is behaving the way we want them to behave. Because we're always going to defer to, you're going to have your, your subject matter experts in all your different areas, no matter which, which one you're focused on, and you're going to be defaulting to them for, for being on top of some of the guidelines, but I think in general, knowing where pharmacy is going, what types of meds, or new um, general mechanism of actions, new, new special agents, or special routes of administration, those are things that we always need to be aware of. If, there's a new a new way that you're going to have an on-body um, mechanism for a drug. I think that's where we need to be able to to know about that and also know about the, then thinking about the logistics of how is that going to be delivered, how are we packaging that, how are we distributing that to patients, right. um, things like that. Knowing that there's a difference between a preservative-free and non-preservative-free <laughs> drug and what should go in your eye, what should not go in your eye. You know. Good time. <laughs> it's an inside joke right there. <laughs> we just had we had some questions about intraocular administration of meds yesterday. Okay. Um, let's let's ask let me ask one more question and we'll kind of end this video. 
Um, we just talked about BCPS. What about other certifications? Like, what other certifications do you think an informatics pharmacist might want to obtain in the, to you know, certify their clinical expertise? Is there any, or is it just for certification? Or are you just are you talking specifically about clinical expertise or expertise in your field in general? Because I think the ASHP or or, or um, the board certifications that are available out there would, if if you're in that area, if you're working in cardiology, you could get the cardiology one. If you're working in ID, you get the ID one. Mm -hmm. You know, I think there's more general ones that maybe you're hinting at. And that's the CP HIMS or CA HIMS, which is um, the certification that's more of a general informatics. Um, Certification, but uh, no one here is CA or CP. Oh, we have a lot of CP. No, but well, like oh, here, 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 here. No, yeah. no, no, no. From what I understand, that it could be true, it could not be true, but it, it is a more of a managerial kind of test that you take, less so about the principles of informatics. And so, hopefully, I know Sam knows a little bit more about this than I do, but future certifications coming out of um, AMIA, um, which is American Medical Informatics Association, might be more appropriate from the clinical aspects that we deal with, right? Right, and that was the examination. They put a lot, they put together a really um, diverse task force to put together the examination. I think it's gonna be available next year um, for all informatics types to test for. So I think that's the, probably gonna be the, the gold standard for informatics for those who are looking for that additional credentialing. Um, and and I, I anticipate a lot of people taking it again because we are um, very specialized, however, there are still general principles that we all abide by. Um, what was it? There is a question that came up in ASHP last year about whether or not ASHP, in addition to like the AM, AMIA one, um, whether ASHP should have their own like informatics board certification. That was a hot debate. I, I actually was against it, but um, I think I've been flipping back and forth. What do you guys think about that? Well, you know, some, it's definitely something that, that I think we've considered and different different um, individuals within our field have, have looked at to see whether or not there's the need and whether or not um, we have the, really have the scope or the breadth to be able to, to have just a certification for, for medication informatics. And, and I think it's still a pretty, a pretty common opinion that we have our clinical specialties within the pharmacy um, area, and then there are still those informatics um, credentials and certifications that really don't have a lot of crossover. And it'll be interesting to see, I think, as, as we get further along and it becomes, because it's still a growing field that we get more and more individuals um, within our specialty to see whether or not we end up getting more of that, that demand for having a certification just for pharmacists. So I will answer this as definitively a no, and, and, I'll, and I'll give my reasons why. Why we can't have, I think, an ASHP sponsored version. Um, number one, I think for you to have a board certification, you really need to have a lot of evidence-based practice guidelines for, for what we do. And you know, as an ID pharmacist or as a critical care pharmacist, how you treat sepsis is the same or should be the same regardless of the institution where you're at. But the issue with informatics pharmacists is that your day-to-day -day will differ greatly based on what institution you're on, whether you're on Epic, Cerner, Allscripts, Meditech, Athena, Health, whatever. Any I mean, home grown systems. Home grown systems. <laughs> and, and so if, if you consider your board certification as a minimal level of competency, you can be totally Epic competent and go to a Cerner site and be completely incompetent in your job despite having a certification like that. And, and yes, we can touch upon basic principles, we can touch upon all these general informatics concepts. None of that applies if you can't do your basic job, which is highly dependent on the EMR that you use, the technologies that you interface with, if you're using OmniCell versus Pixis versus AccuDose. Um, and so I would say no from the ASHP perspective. I think there's opportunities for AMIA, um, which you know, as an organization that covers all um, all potential informatics practices, I think that's more appropriate. But I think if you look too closely into just pharmacy, our practices are just crazy divergent. All right, I think we'll kind of wrap up this video. Probably went a little longer than expected. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a lot longer than I expected. It's probably about like 10, 15 minutes. 
Uh, but all right, so we'll, we'll probably jump into another video, but if you guys have questions for these guys, definitely hit up, probably have them LinkedIn <laughs> 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 profiles or whatever, shoot them a message, ask them questions. What's the thing you do? Is it this? There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time, guys. Hey, guys. Thanks for tuning in and watching the video. If you like the content, definitely hit the Impro RX button over to your left to subscribe and definitely check out more videos over here uh, to your right. Now, as always, if you have questions, comments, and even better, suggestions for future videos, definitely let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, until next time, guys.